Hello everyone, welcome to Aptie Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. So the important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 4th of January, the first important news that is government to set up new NMC board to conduct next second Prime Minister addressed 108 Indian Science Congress. Third, no need for extra curb on free speech of the minister. Second last, India to cut subsidies spent in food and fertilizers. And the last is an editorial preventing animal cruelty is a duty of the states. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin the session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do press a like button. Starting the session with the first news, that is government to set up new NMC board to conduct next, something important for gender studies paper too, that is issues related to development and management of education and human resources. So the draft National Medical Commission Bill 2022, which seeks to introduce the fifth autonomous body under the country EPICS Medical Education Regulator, and this will call to conduct the national exit test. So the new body is made by the government after the MCI, that is the Medical Council of India. This was replaced by the National Medical Commissions. And now the commission will take and conduct the new examination. Right? The draft bill states that the existing National Board of Examination will be dissolved. However, all orders and accreditations provided by the body will continue to exist till the date of expiry. Now, what is the proposed changes by the government and what are the things that has been envisaged under the bill? So, the new board under the National Medical, National Medical Commissions will subsume the role of the Independence National Board of Examination, which may think will streamline the process. Now, this come at the time when the role of NMC is expanding. The manager MCI ko vanish kya. Even if it, you see the new Kadi was formed, so the National Medical Council was that was a commission. Actually, it's a National Medical Commissions. With the government working towards the implementation of the next, a nationwide screen test for the doctors will be there and it will be registered with the medical council. After the examination is cleared by the doctors, they will be the part of the medical fraternity. The UG entrance is conducted by the National Testing Agency and no changes have been suggested to this in the new bill. So the examination process, the conduct of examination will process by the NDA itself. Now there will be two part examinations. The two part examination that will act as a qualifying examination. The first will be qualifying, right? For granting registrations to doctor as well as the basis for the post graduation admission. So this will be the one exam that will call for dual process. The examination will call the board of examination in medical sciences, which will take over the functions of the national board of examination that currently conducts the entrance examination for the post graduation and the super specialty course. So once you are done with MBBS degree, right? MBBS degree ke baad, specialty ke liye, aapko national board of examinations ki jo exam hai, jo pehle hua karti thi, wo deni hoti thi. Now, the new examination will be named as a board of examination in medical sciences. The National Board of Examination also conduct the screening test for the foreign medical graduates, which also replaced by the new next examination, right? So, jitne bhi Indian individual foreign countries, you know, they're studying abroad, the medical sciences from abroad countries, they have to also come up with the test by the next so that they can be eligible to practice medicine in India. Now, other function of the board, in addition to conduct the next test, the new board will have an accreditation institutions for diploma, diplomat, postgraduate fellowship, and super specialty fellowship. It will determine the minimum 
requirement for conducting these courses and grant them as per the uh, criteria that is set. Now, this will be the fifth autonomous board that will be there. So the first earlier four was undergraduate medical examination board that sets the norm for undergraduate courses. Then there's a post graduation medical courses that set for the post graduation. Then there is medical assessment and rating board that inspect and rate the medical education institutions. And the last is the ethics and media registration board that regulates the professional conduct of doctors and registered them. Now, moving to the other news, Prime Minister address 108 Indian Science Congress, something important for gender studies paper 2 under the subtopic that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So recently, the Prime Minister of India, while addressing the 108 Indian National Congress, has underlined the importance of women involvement in the scientific research that is increasing and the participation of women is reflected in the progress of the society right i'll tell you what is the theme for 108 which is again important and even you can get a direct question in ac paper right now the pm said that the aim is to give impetus in science and technology and research and he pointed out that the efforts of science and technology can bear fruit when taken into the labs to the lab so jo bhi practical mein cheeje Labs mein hoti hai, hai practically ground pe lani ki hai. So this is what the term means, trekking from labs to lab. Now what is a theme? Now this theme is something that will be important for your mains examination as well. Or even baat kare agar essay paper ki, to direct aap se essay pe bhi sawaal puche ja sakte. The theme is science and technology for sustainable development and women empowerment. This itself can be a question. Now the fifth session, the first session of the Indian Science Congress was there in 1940. Now performance of the global innovations, kya performance in India global innovations ki underlining India's position in the global innovation index. The Prime Minister has said that presently India is among the three nation in startup. So this is the ranking of India in terms of the startups. Now, till 2015, India was 81 position in the global innovation index, also known as GII of 130 countries and it has reached 40th place at current in 2022. And asserting the importance of science and technology in making India Atmanbar Bharat, the Prime Minister said that efforts of science and technology can bear fruit only when they go labs to land. Now India's performance in fields of science and technology, the Prime Minister has noted that India is fast becoming one of the top countries in the world in the field of science and technology and the role of India's scientific power will be very important in the height that India will reach in the next 25 years. The Prime Minister highlighted that the way data analysis has been rapidly moving ahead, there is a huge progress that can be done. And 21st century, 21st century has two things, that is the data and technology. These can take India's science into a new height. Data analysis is rapidly moving ahead and it keeps converting the information into sight and analysis into an actionable knowledge. Now, moving to the other news, no need for extra curb on free speech of the ministers. This is what the Supreme Court has noted. Something important for gender studies paper 2 under the subtopic that is the structure, organization and function of executive and judiciary. Recently, the Supreme Court of India has said that the no additional restrictions can be put on MPs and ministers and they do enjoy the equal freedom of speech under the Article 192 of the Indian Constitution, right? So they have also a right to speak, but consent, the fact is that the some sensitive issue should be taken with caution. The five judge constitutional bench has said that the minister's statement cannot be attributed variously and the government even will apply the principle of collective responsibility. So if someone has talked about it, it's not just the responsibility of it. It's a collective responsibility to take the government's responsibility. And the court has also noted that it is a duty of every Indian to ensure the dignity and freedom of speech not convert into the hate speech. So you should try to make sure that if you have given freedom of speech, then you don't spread hate speech. It's not that there is no religious sentiment, there is no specific community. Freedom of speech should be respected by each and every individual. The state is under the duty of informations, protected the fundamental right of the citizen if violated by the non-state actor. 
तो बैकग्राउंड की अगर बात करें किस कंटेक्स में ये सारी बातें कही गई हैं द जजमेंट कम ऑन अ क्वेश्चन वेदर द रेस्ट्रिक्शन कैन बी इम्पोज ऑन द पब्लिक फिशनरी विद रिगार्ड्स टू द राइट ऑफ फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एंड एक्सप्रेशन एंड थ्री जज बेंच ऑन अक्टूबर टू हैज रेफर्ड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच ऑफ द वेरियस इशूज फॉर एडजुडिकेशन इंक्लूडिंग वेदर अ पब्लिक फंक्शनरी एंड अ मिनिस्टर कैन क्लेम अ फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच वाइल एग्जिस्टिंग इन द व्यू विद सेंसिटिव मैटर्स तो सेंसिटिव मैटर्स में कई बार पॉलिटिशियंस की तरफ से सम ऑफ द हाईली डिबेटेड इशू एंड अदर हाईली सेंसिटिव इशू लाइक इशू ऑफ रेप मर्डर एंड अदर थिंग देर वॉज अ लॉट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी वेन इट्स कम टू अ स्टेटमेंट बाय मिनिस्टर सो दीज थिंग शुड डेफिनेटली बी यू नो दे शुड नॉट बी प्रैक्टिस इस तरह से चीज़ों की बचने की जरूरत है वी शुड डेफिनेटली द मिनिस्टर शुड टेक अ मोरल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नॉट टू स्पीक बट डेफिनेटली दे हैव अ राइट टू स्पीक Uh, statement should not hurt any specific community that should be the sole priority the constitutional bench with the reserve verdict on november 15 has said that people holding the public office should exercise the self restraint and not babble in the thing disappearing and insulting any other community in the country now moving to the other news india to cut subsidy spend in food and fertilizer something important for gender studies paper 3 under the sub topic that is issues related to development issues related to direct and indirect farm subsidies minimum support price and public distribution system according to the government officials india aims to cut the spending on the food and fertilizer subsidy to 3.7 trillion in the fiscal year from april and it will cut it to 26% from this year the food and fertilizer subsidy alone account for about one third of the total india's budget that is accounting for 39.45 trillion in fiscal but the reductions in the subsidies in particular may prove politically sensitive and election looming on the horizon now kya road map hai government ki these statements were given by the government officials and the government stand were evident so the government expect to be the budget uh, the budget about 2.3 trillion on the food subsidies in the coming fiscal compared to 2.7 trillion on the current fiscal so because of the restrictions that was also there because of the covid 19 and some of the schemes the welfare schemes that call for the free food services government ke jo budget allocations mein numbers increase ki gayi thi spending on the fertilizer subsidies is likely to about 1.4 trillion and this compared with the 2.3 trillion this year the large part of the saving will come with the end of the covid 19 or free or food schemes ko band karne ke baad itni sari saving government ke paas ho payegi 26% reduction in the subsidy spending at aims at retain fiscal deficit the government is eager to rein the fiscal deficit with target of 6.4% of the gdp in the current fiscal year now this is a brief idea like a graph that will help you understand about the revision part so the government expect to set aside this much amount which i have already discussed so you can take a revision note and even you can take this screenshot for this now preventing animal cruelty is a duty for the state this is a editorial for the day something important for general studies paper 2 that is a welfare schemes for the vulnerable section of the population by the center and the state government so what are the issues under this editorial before we jump into the issues like see the theme that is preventing animal cruelty we we'll look into the themes like uh, issues like animal rights and safety prevention of cruelty of animal act 1960 arguments of the petitioners and the way ahead so recently the constitutional bench of the supreme court has reserved the judgment on the petition seeking to strike down the tamil nadu laws on uh, like basically which protects the jallikattu which is an uh, festival which takes place it's a lot of sentiment that is attached to it so by claiming the bull taming sports it's a cultural heritage of the states and it's is protected under 29 of the indian constitution now jallikattu ki agar baat kare it's a sports where men compete against each other and hold on the humps of the educated bulls and release into an open arena i think most of you must be aware of this if not you can watch a short video on jalikat that will give you a precise information in 2014 the animal board of india versus a nagarajan the two judge bench in the supreme court has declared jalikati to be illegitimate and it's a act which is creating a cruelty against the animal 
So the court found that the practice was cruel and caused animal unnecessary pain and suffering. This was the observation that was made by the Honorable Supreme Court. Since then, the Tamil Nadu has made efforts to research the sport's legality. So, this legality ke baare mein hai discussion ki gai hai, whether it should be continued forward, what are the animal rights and what are the uh, basically part of the conservation process that come at stake. Now, animal rights and safety, part 3 of the Indian constitution which deal with the fundamental rights are explicitly conferred to the animal as well. And article 14 ki baat kare, jaha ek individual ko right to equality di jati, article 21 with right to life and personal liberty is basically bestowed on a person. Now, since the directive principle of state policy, which is also known as DSP, you know, DPSP, so DPSP ki baat kare and fundamental duties ki baat kare, they have a, a specific things that is mentioned in the part 4 and 4 of the Indian constitution, with the responsibility on the state, on the human being to protect and improve the natural environment. If you're writing in mains paper, abhi zarur example ke pe likhe. Now, prevention on cruelty to Animal Act 1960, this is a law legislation which is backing the cruelty on animal. So the parliament has enacted this act in 1960 and it's a legitimate intention to act to prevent inflammatory and unnecessary pain on the animals. The Animal Welfare Board of India was established in 1962 under the section 4 of this act. Now this act called for the punishment for the causality of unnecessary cruelty and suffering of the animal. The act defined animals and different format of the animal as well. Now, arguments of the petitions, the judicial review of the legislation can broadly be made on the two ground. One on whether the legislation possesses to compete with the enact of the law and second, whether the law violates on the other and the fundamental right that is delineated in the part three of the Indian constitution. So this argument may basically question ki gai hai, ki this should not be continued and the Supreme Court should intervene in deciding that this is not legitimate one. Now Tamil Nadu amends the petition claim failed on the both ground. The first petitioner recognized that the union and the state legislature have equal power to make laws on the prevention of animal cruelty relatable to entry 17 on the concurrent list. So, in this case, all the laws that are made prevention of animal cruelty is a concurrent list ki subject. Hai. We have three lists on our subject as per the schedule 7 of the Indian constitution. First is called center union list, right? So, this would be the union list, other the state list and the concurrent list. So, this is under the concurrent list. Now, but the law regulating the Jalikatu according to them exclude the practice of the prevention of cruelty animal act and the condoni cruelty on animal, hence it must be seen as a credible actions with nexus to entry 70. Second, the petition submitted, the petitioner in the summit ke Supreme Court mein arrived to clear finding of the fact of the laws that were there in 2014 as well. Now, what will be the way ahead, how the Supreme Court will address the issue? It's a big challenge. Definitely a lot of sentiment is also attached. So the need of the R is to understand the word is linkage between many preventable communicable communities into the animal part. Considering the substantial role by the animal, our lives we will need to sensitize who will fulfilly hurts the animal because definitely it's an act of cruelty. And proper implementation of the law is a need of the R in addition to instilling the compulsory feeling of an individual. So everything has to be looked in a wholesome manner. The prevention of animal cruelty should be there. There should be a dignity where we respect the animal and even causing the part where the cruelty is done, this should be prevented and it is already a legal backing there in the part of the DPSP as well. So, this is kuch core examples that you answers conclude. Kar now, moving ahead with the MCQ questions of the day. Before I proceed, just to tell you the answers of yesterday's questions. For first question, the correct option is C. For second question, the correct option is C again. Today's MCQ for practice, new umbrella entities for the retail payment, only those entities that are owned and controlled by the Indian citizen, at least three years of experience in the part of promoters for NUEs, for no foreign investment is allowed in the NUE for existing guideline. The second is with regards to electoral bond, all nationalized in India are authorized to issue in cash the bond, we valid for 15 days in the date of issuance. Some of these bonds are remittable at the designated account of the registered political parties. So do check it out. Sometimes the questions is to give you an experience. You might be, you know, uh, revising this question hand on. So that will give you an idea that how things are working and how your, your accuracy part for the prelims examination is at what level. 
So practice a lot more questions that will give you an edge over the upcoming prelims examination. This was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.